When I first started using pestles, I was very stubborn and I didn't want to learn from other people before I threw myself into it. Of course, that was a big mistake, as I could have learned much faster from other people who have already made those mistakes and it could have saved me so much time. However, that's why I'm doing this video to show you 10 do's and don'ts that I discovered over the time of using pestles to save you all the headaches. Are you ready? Let's get started. The first do's is to use Clairefontaine pestle matte paper. Clairefontaine pestle matte paper is considered by many artists as the best quality pestle paper available on the market. It's a relatively new paper that has quickly become a favorite among pestle artists for a variety of reasons. One of the main advantages of Clairefontaine pestle mat is its unique texture. Unlike traditional pestle paper, which are often quite rough and textured, pestle mat has a velvety smooth surface that allows pestles to be applied with ease. This texture also allows for excellent color, saturation and vibrancy, making the finished artwork appear more vibrant and luminous. Another important feature of Clairefontaine pestle mat is its durability. The paper is made from high quality materials, including acid free and pH neutral cellulose, which makes it resistant to fading, yellowing, and aging over time. This means that the finished work will remain vibrant and beautiful for years to come without any risk of damage or deterioration. The tooth of the Clairefontaine pestle matte paper is also quite unique. It is designed to hold onto the pestle pigment, allowing for better control and precision when applying the pestle. The tooth also allows for multiple layers of pestle to be applied without the risk of the paper becoming overworked or smudging, which is a common issue with some lower quality pestle paper. But why it is important to use good quality paper from the start? Using good quality paper is essential for beginner pastel artists because it sets the foundation for their artistic journey. As a beginner, it's important to learn the basics and develop proper techniques. The quality of the paper used can greatly affect how easy or difficult it is to achieve the desired effect. High quality pastel paper is designed to hold onto the pastel pigment, allowing for better color saturation and vibrancy. This means that beginner artists are more likely to achieve the desired effect and produce artwork that looks more professional and polished. While it may be tempting to save money by using lower quality paper, it can ultimately hinder your growth as an artist and limit your potential. Investing in good quality paper from the beginning is an investment in your artistic journey and sets you on the path to creating artwork that looks great. The first don't is not to use paper that is not made for pastel. Using paper that isn't specially designed for pastel can lead to a frustrating and disappointing experience for beginner pastel artists. Non-pastel papers typically have a smooth surface that doesn't provide the tooth necessary for pastel to adhere properly resulting in difficulty applying the pestle and achieving the desired effect. Non-pestle papers also lack the ability to hold onto the pestle pigment causing the color to easily rub off or smudge. This can make it difficult for beginner artists to achieve the desired color, saturation and vibrancy in their artwork. In addition to these technical issues, using this kind of paper can also affect the longevity of the artwork. Pastel pigments can be sensitive to light and the moisture, and using paper that isn't designed for them can lead to fading or other forms of damage over time. It's important for pastel beginner artists to invest in good quality paper that is specially designed for the medium they're going to use to get the best possible results and set themselves up for success. The do's number two is to use a light touch when applying pastel. Using a light touch when applying pastel is an important technique for beginner pastel artists to learn. Pastel pigments are powdery and delicate, 
and applying too much pressure when working with them can lead to unintended consequences such as oversaturating the colors or breaking the pastel sticks or pencil leads. When applying pastel with a light touch, you can build up the layers of pigment gradually and create a more nuanced effect. This technique allows the artist to maintain control over the application of pastel and achieve the desired result without overworking the surface of the paper. If you use a light touch, you are going to be able to blend and mix more easily, resulting in smoother transitions and a more cohesive look overall. It can help beginner artists to avoid creating a muddy effect where the colors become overworked and blend together in an unattractive way. Another benefit is that it can extend the life of the pastel sticks or the pencils. By applying the pastel with a gentle touch, you are less likely to break or wear down the sticks, allowing them to last longer and save money in the long run. Don'ts number two. Don't use too much pressure when applying pastel. Using too much pressure when applying pastel can lead to a number of issues for beginner pastel artists. Pastel pigments are powdery and delicate, and applying too much pressure can cause the pastel lid to break, leading to wasted materials and an uneven application. Additionally, using too much pressure can result in oversaturating the colors, making it difficult to achieve the desired effect. This can also cause the pastel to become embedded too deeply into the tooth of the paper making it difficult to add additional layers or adjust the colors as needed. Another issue with using too much pressure when applying pastel is that it can create an uneven surface on the paper. The pastel pigment can become compacted in some areas while other areas are left with less pigment resulting in a patchy or uneven appearance. If you do this, you're also gonna face a lot of troubles to blend and mix the colors effectively. Instead of creating smooth transitions, the colors may become added and unattractive. Tools number three. Create good base layers first and then add the details. Creating good base layers is an important step in the pastel drawing process for beginner artists. A good base layer provides a foundation for the rest of the drawing, establishing the overall tone and texture of the artwork. To create a good base layer, you should start by blocking in the basic shapes and colors of the subject. This can be done using broad strokes of pastel, focusing on establishing the overall composition of the artwork. Once the basic shapes and colors are established, you can begin building up the layers of pastel to create depth and texture. This involves using lighter and darker shades of the same colors to create highlights and shadows, and blending the colors together to create a smooth transition between them. By focusing on creating a strong base layer first and then adding details, you can ensure that your artwork is well structured, balanced and visually appealing. It also allows for more flexibility in the process as adjustments can be made to the base layers as needed before moving on to the more detailed work. Don'ts number three. Don't add all the details too soon. Adding all the details too soon in a pastel drawing is a common mistake that beginner artists should avoid. One reason not to add all the details too soon is that it can make it difficult to adjust the overall composition of the drawing. For example, if you decide that the composition needs to be shifted or a particular element needs to be emphasized or de-emphasized, it can be challenging to make these changes if all the details have been already added. Another reason not to do this is that it can make it difficult to achieve a sense of depth and dimensionality in your artwork. By focusing too much on the details too early in the process, you may neglect the overall tone and texture, resulting in a flat and lifeless artwork. Moreover, adding all the details too soon can lead to overworking the pastel, making it difficult to blend and layer the colors effectively. Adding all the details too soon can be a time-consuming process, leading to a frustrating and exhausting experience for the artist. By taking the time to build up the layers of pastel gradually, you can enjoy the process of creating the artwork and achieve a greater sense of control 
and satisfaction in the final result. Tools number 4. Use your finger, blending stamp or sponge to blend. When it comes to blending pastel, a lot of beginner artists have a few options to choose from, including using your finger, blending stamps or sponges. Each of these tools offer unique benefits and can be used in different ways to achieve various effects. Using your fingers is a popular choice among many artists because it allows for a high level of control and precision in blending. Fingers are ideal for blending small areas and creating subtle transitions between the colors. They also allow the artist to feel the texture of the paper and the pastel, gaining more control over the final result. Blending stamps, on the other hand, are ideal for creating smoother transitions between the colors and also for blending larger areas. They are made of tightly rolled paper or soft rubber and come in various sizes to accommodate different areas of the drawing. Blending stamps are especially useful for blending delicate details such as facial features or intricate patterns where using your fingers would be too imprecise. Sponges are another option for blending pastel. They are useful for creating soft, diffused effects and for blending large areas quickly. The sponges come in various shapes and sizes and they can be also cut or shaped to match the artist's need. Don'ts number 4. Don't use a fixative spray to seal or pastel drawings. The paper I am using, Clairefontaine Pastel Matte, is very good quality and holds the paper very well, that's why a fixative is not needed. I made this mistake once and the drawing I'm showing you right now was my first and last victim. Using a fixative spray to seal a pastel drawing is a common practice but it isn't recommended for several reasons. Firstly, fixative sprays can alter the appearance of the pastel, causing it to darken or dull. This can affect the vibrancy and brightness of the colors, resulting in a drawing that looks flat and lifeless. Secondly, these sprays can also cause the pastel to become smudged or blurred, especially if they are not applied correctly. This can be frustrating for the artist as it can ruin hours of hard work and effort just in one second. Thirdly, fixative sprays can be harmful for your health if inhaled or ingested. Hopefully it won't be the case, but it's very important to keep this in mind. The chemicals used in fixatives can be toxic and can cause respiratory problems or other health issues if used without proper ventilation or protective equipment. So in conclusion, it isn't recommended to use a fixative spray to seal your pastel drawings. Instead, the best way to protect the pastel is to frame it behind a glass or plexiglass, which will also protect the painting from dust and moisture without altering its appearance. Alternatively, storing the artwork in a protective sleeve or portfolio can also help to preserve it. Always pay attention to the tip of the pastel pencil before using it. It's essential to pay attention to the cleanliness of your pastel pencil before using it. A dirty pastel pencil can negatively affect the drawing and make it difficult to achieve the desired results. If the tip of the pastel pencil is dirty, it can cause the colors to mix and blend in unwanted ways. You're going to risk to get a muddy appearance that detracts from the overall quality of the artwork. The colors may also not transfer evenly onto the paper, making it difficult to achieve the desired level of detail or precision into drawing. Don'ts number 5. Don't forget to clean your pencil tip after moving from a dark area to a light one. I entirely recommend to clean your pastel pencil after moving from a dark area to a light one to prevent unwanted color transfer and avoid a lot of frustrations. If you don't clean the tip of your pencil after using it in a dark area, it may still have residual pigment on the tip. When you move to a light area and use that pencil, the pigment from the previous area can mix with a new one, resulting in a muddy and undesired effect. To avoid this, it's a good practice to clean your pastel pencil by gently wiping the tip 
on a clean cloth or paper towel before using it in a new area. This ensures that any excess pigment or dirt is removed and that the pencil is ready to use with a clean tip. By taking the time to clean your pastel pencil tip, you can ensure that your artwork remains crisp, vibrant and clean. So remember to clean your pencil tip after moving from a dark area to a light one and are going to be stress free and avoid a lot of frustrations. Do's number 6. Take your time and be gentle with the pastel paper. As a beginner pastel artist, it's important to take your time and be gentle with the pastel paper. Pastel paper is delicate and can be easily damaged if handled too roughly or with too much force. This can cause unwanted marks or scratches on the paper which can affect your drawing in the long run. Taking your time and being gentle with your paper also allows you to work more carefully and with a lot more precision. This is especially important when working on detailed or intricate sections of your artwork. By being patient and gentle, you are going to avoid a lot of mistakes and make sure that your drawing is going to look the way you want. Another reason why it is important to be gentle with the pastel paper is that it can affect the way the pastel sticks or the pastel pencils adhere to the paper. If the paper is damaged, it may not hold the pastel pigment properly, resulting in uneven or patchy areas in your artwork. This can be especially frustrating when you have put a lot of time and effort into a piece and then see that how a little line will ruin all of it. Don't number 6. Don't fill up the paper's texture by adding too much pastel. You should avoid filling up the paper's texture by adding too much pastel. This is a common mistake that a lot of pastel beginners do and I did it as well because you are tempted to press as hard as possible to cover the sandpaper texture of the pastel paper. Pastel paper has a certain texture that is designed to hold the pastel pigment and give the artwork a unique tactile quality. However, if you add too much pastel to the paper, it can fill up the texture and result in a flat, lifeless looking artwork. One of the key benefits of pastel as a medium is its ability to create rich texture defects on paper. This is achieved by layering the pastel pigment on the paper, building up the colors and tones gradually to create depth and dimension. However, if you apply too much pastel too quickly, you risk filling up the paper's texture and losing the opportunity to create these interesting effects. Another issue with adding too much pastel is that it can make the artwork appear heavy and overworked. This can detract from the overall quality of the piece and make it look unprofessional. By using a light touch and building up the pastel gradually, you're going to avoid all of these mistakes. Do's number 7. Sharpen your pencil by using a cutter and a sandpaper pad. Sharpening your pastel pencils is a crucial part of using pastels effectively. A sharp point on your pastel pencil allows for more precise lines and helps to prevent breaking or crumbling of the pastel lid. Using a cutter and a sandpaper pad is one of the most effective ways to sharpen pastel pencils. Here's how you can do it. Hold the pastel pencil in one hand and the cutter in the other hand. Place the blade and the cutter about 1.5 cm away from the tip of the pencil and gently slice off a thin layer of the wood casing. Rotate the pencil and repeat the process, taking care to keep the blade at the same angle and to slice off an even layer all around the pencil. Continue this process until you have exposed enough of the pastel lid to work with. Next, take the sandpaper pad and gently rub the exposed pastel lid against it in a circular motion. Continue rubbing until the tip is sharp and pointed. Blow off any excess pastel dust from the tip before using it. Using a cutter and a sandpaper pad to sharpen your pastel pencils provides a clean and precise tip that allows for smooth and controlled application of the pastel. It's also a more efficient and cost-effective method compared to using a traditional pencil sharpener which can be too harsh and result in breakage or crumbling of the pastel lid. Don'ts number 7. Don't use a sharpener that is too aggressive. 
Using a sharpener that is too aggressive for pastel pencils can cause the pastel lid to break or crumble, leading to wasted material. Aggressive sharpeners refer to sharpeners that remove too much wood casing or apply too much pressure, causing the delicate pastel lid to fracture. One of the worst you can use is an electric sharpener. Electric sharpeners can be too aggressive for pastel pencils and the sharp blades can cause the lid to snap or break easily. It's best to use a gentle sharpener, such as a handheld metal sharpener or sandpaper that allows for controlled sharpening and minimal pressure on the pastel lid. Another option is to use a specialized pastel pencil sharpener, which is designed with a smaller blade and a gentler touch to accommodate the delicate nature of the pastel lid. Do's and don'ts. Number 8. If you do make a mistake, don't worry, they can be easily corrected. As a beginner pastel artist, it's important to remember that making mistakes is a natural part of the creative process. While it can be frustrating to see a mistake in your artwork, it's essential to stay positive and remember that mistakes can always be corrected. The beauty of pastel as a medium is that it is forgiving and allows for easy corrections. If you find that a certain area of your drawing needs adjustment, you can simply add a new layer of pastel on top to fix the mistake. Remember, great artworks are often the result of multiple attempts and revisions. Mistakes can even lead to unexpected results, providing opportunities for exploration and experimentation in your art. So don't be discouraged by mistakes. Use them as a learning opportunity and a chance to improve your skills. The more you practice and experiment, the more confident you'll become in your abilities as a pastel artist. Keep exploring, keep creating, and remember that, and remember that, every mistake is simply a stepping stone on your artistic journey. Do's and don'ts number 9. Don't hurry with highlights and do this step at the end of the drawing. One of the most important things to keep in mind is adding highlights to your artwork. However, it's important to remember to save this step until the end of the drawing process. Adding highlights involves using a white pencil or a lighter shade of pastel to create areas of brightness or shine on your artwork. By adding these highlights at the end, you'll be able to see the overall effect of your drawing and decide where the highlights will be most effective. If you add them too soon in the drawing process, you may find that they get lost or they blend in with other colors or the layers. If you realize later in the process that you need to make adjustments to the colors or values of your drawing, you may need to redo the highlights as well. By saving this step to the end, you can ensure that they pop and stand out, giving your artwork a finished and polished look. So remember to take your time and be patient and save this step until the end of the drawing to achieve the best results in your artwork. Do's and don'ts number 10. Don't be too hard on yourself and do have fun and enjoy the process of creating art. When it comes to creating art, it's important to remember to enjoy the process and not be too hard on yourself. Art is a form of self-expression and it should be a fun and rewarding experience. Sometimes it can be very easy to get caught up in the final result and forget about the joy of creating. So, if you are feeling discouraged or frustrated with your artwork, take a step back and remember that it's okay to make mistakes. Every artist experiences setbacks and challenges, but it's how we approach them that matters. Instead of getting discouraged, try to view these challenges as opportunities to learn and grow as an artist. Another very important thing to remember is to have fun and enjoy the process of creating. Art is a wonderful way to express yourself and to explore your creativity and remember to embrace the process and let your creativity guide you. Don't forget to take breaks and step away from the artwork when you need to. It's important to give yourself time to rest and recharge, especially when you're feeling overwhelmed or frustrated. Taking a break can help you gain a fresh perspective and come back to your artwork with renewed energy and enthusiasm. So remember to be kind to yourself, embrace the process and have fun creating. You never know what amazing artwork 
you might create when you allow yourself to let go and enjoy the journey. That's all for today's video on the do's and don'ts for pastel beginners. I hope you found these tips helpful and they will inspire you to dive deeper into the world of pastel. Remember, pastel drawing is a skill that takes a lot of time to master, but with practice and dedication, you can create a lot of artworks that are going to be proud of. So, as you start your journey as a pastel artist, remember to choose the right paper, to layer your colors, use different strokes, and most important, enjoy the process. Don't be too hard on yourself and remember that every artist starts from somewhere. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends that may be interested as well in learning more about pastel drawing. If you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe and hit the bell button. If you hit the button, you are going to be notified every time one of my videos goes live. Thank you again for watching my video and I hope I'm going to see you in the next one as well. Bye!